What's been going on at Sonex has been a big question around here. So, in this episode, we travel to Oshkosh, Wisconsin to give you a factory tour. This year, the EAA AirVenture Air Show saw epic attendance during the entire week, both in spectators and the number of aircraft that flew in for the event. During the show, we had the opportunity to travel across the airport over the runway to get a tour with Sonex. Hi, I'm Mark Schabel, General Manager of Sonex Aircraft, and we're here at Sonex Aircraft in Oshkosh. So this is the office hangar at Sonics. We have all hangars on our facility, and this is where Sonics got its start um, back in uh, 1997, 1998 time frame. Uh, and over my shoulder here, we have the Hornet's Nest Cafe, uh, which is a fun little place to uh, eat our lunch, and John Monette is a big fan of uh, 50s diners. and. For a time, uh, it was kind of the political center of the airport when no one was uh, happy with the airport manager, so that's why it got named the Hornet's Nest. Um, we also have all of our offices in here, and uh, before offices were built, John actually started building the first three Sonics prototypes at the same time that he was restoring Piper Cubs and Vagabonds. So it was pillar to post in here, there was, there was no space, but that's how things got their start, and we grew the campus from there over the years. So uh, right now we're in the Sonics Flight Center and this is where we typically store our factory prototypes as a showroom, if you will. Um, but in recent years the shop has kind of invaded the territory because we've been very busy with uh, customer quick build kits. So um, we, we need more space, that'll be coming soon. If you could tell us a little bit about the differences from the A model to the, the B model, what's, what's changed over the years? So the major change between the legacy or A model and the new B models is really about the forward fuselage. Uh, the A models had a tapering forward fuselage where the forward fuselage sides tapered down to a smaller firewall from behind the seat. So all we did with the B models was take those fuselage sidewalls and made them parallel. So all the streamlining is done in the cowling. Doesn't sound like a big change, but it's a major increase in uh, room and comfort in the cockpit, even though the total width of the fuselage hasn't changed. Along with that is the side benefit of getting uh, four more gallons of fuel on the airplane. So instead of a 16 gallon tank, we now have a 20 gallon tank. And remember, we do header tanks uh, and not wing tanks, and we run gravity feed whenever we can. And we've made that safe because of our rotationally molded fuel cells that you'll get to see in our warehouse. So the wider firewall definitely has advantages in that we have more options with engine installations. Uh, just gives us more breathing room as we do things like the turbocharged AeroV and the Rotex 912 engines, uh, where you can uh, nice and cleanly arrange things um, in the engine compartment, but still have uh, room to get your hands in there and work on things. Uh, you know, frontal area was certainly a bit of a concern when we were doing the B models because we do have a little bit more of a blunt nose with the new cowling. But the big change we made also has to do with the cowling and that's to go to side cooling exits. And that's allowed us to not have a big lip for the cooling exit on the bottom of the cowling because we're no longer fighting the lift essentially, the positive pressure on the underside of the, of the fuselage. That's actually made the aircraft a little bit faster, although not enough to put it on paper in our specifications. But it's definitely a bit cleaner and uh, cools really, really well. Uh, so we have very effective cooling in the engine as well. So people that have never heard of Sonics before, which I'm, I'd be very surprised they haven't heard of Sonics, um, has the construction methods changed at all over the years? Is it pretty much the same? Where are you at with like, take out of the box and click it together. Is it, is it matched hold? Just talk about the construction for a minute. Yeah, so the, the basic construction method has not changed in terms of the way that we build airplanes. The kit, however, has evolved tremendously. Um, we now have a lot of uh, CNC machined parts that are standard with the kit, a lot more matched hole tooling. Uh, we've always had laser cut skins with pilot holes in just about everything, but now in more cases we have matching holes to go along with it. 
But what are the, the basic tools required to get into this? So the Sonics was designed to be built with a minimal investment in tools. And you'll see if you look around our shop, you don't see a lot of exotic tooling except for a few things that you wouldn't normally need because we build brand new prototypes out of the raw material. But it's basically uh, a wood cutting bandsaw, a bench top model is fine. In today's newest kits, you hardly need to use it, but on a few things you will need it. A little bench top drill press, a regular drill, plenty of drill bits, of course. Um, a, a pneumatic pop rivet gun with a compressor and uh, really just the cheapest one you can get from Harbor Freight will probably build 10 airplanes. So no need to spend a ton of money there. Uh, we use uh, snips, um, both straight and uh, left and right. Uh, fluting pliers, again in today's kits you're using the snips and the fluting pliers hardly ever, but you want them on hand for uh, if you have to tweak one flute that we didn't get quite right or if uh, you know you need to do a couple of the handful of things that you might need to cut out. All right, so one of the, the big questions people have that I get a lot on comments and things like that is, where is the best place to start when you're actually building a kit? You know, right. do I build the tail section? Do I build the wings? Do I build the fuselage? In, in my experience, I've learned that in a roundabout way, it's best to start with the fuselage, not because of like, not having the practice or whatever, but just right. everything happens in the fuselage. Yeah. Right, and get that knocked out, it takes the most amount of time, but that's just my opinion. In your opinion, where should somebody start on building their, their fuselage and progress through the kit? Yeah, so our kit's completely modular. So the way that the plans are set up, it doesn't matter where you start. A lot of people start with the tail kit, of course, because that's the least expensive and helps them dip a toe in the water and see if they like it. Okay, but and you, in that regard, does Sonics have a, just a rudder kit or how do you, or the whole tail the kit? The full empanage. The full empanage kit, yeah. okay. Yep, and um, you can uh, start with that, you can start with the fuselage, or you can start with the wings, it really doesn't matter. But from a more production point of view, if you will, if you want to get into production of getting your kit, uh, yeah. in yeah. your experience, has any you know, it, one or the other been better to start. One or the other really doesn't have any major benefit. Okay. Um, when we're doing it here in the Quick Pod Build Shop, of course, we got people working on everything at the same time. But we'll start with the fuselage sidewalls, which we build on a flat table, and then we set them up and put cross ties in, uh, while someone else is working on the wings. It's really all about personal preference. Okay. Is there like like right now? Obviously, we're standing next to a fuselage. Where would you start on this part of the subassembly? Right, so as you've seen here, and the first thing that you'll notice with the Sonics, or should notice, is that everything's a box with fairings on it. Um, just a square box with a rounded turtle deck or, or an airfoil, if it's the wing, uh, or a canopy. And as you can see, we've got a tail cone here. This happens to be a jet. And like I said, we, we build the side walls first. Uh, just on a flat table, we put the longerons on and the uprights and then we'll stand it up and do the cross ties. And we're squaring things literally with architectural framing squares and no fixtures, uh, no jigs, and uh, start putting things on. So from the tail cone, lower the box portion, we'll start putting fuselage formers on it and then do the turtle deck. And then from there, we usually hang the forward fuselage sidewalls on it and then put the floor on and square everything and go, go on from there. Now let me introduce you to our sponsors that make all this possible. Awesome companies like Dynon Avionics, AirTech Coatings, AV Nation, and Airworks. Check the description below this video for links to these great companies. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. So one of the most unique features about the Sonics is you have two different tail options. Yeah. Describe to us what are the two different options if there's a difference in performance of them or just aesthetics? It's really just all about aesthetics. Um, the heritage of John Monette designs after the Sonerai are all V-tails and Y-tails. And um, Y-tails definitely have an advantage, but we just love the way it looks. It's, it's a great looking airplane and the way that we build them, you really need a re rear view mirror in the cockpit to tell which one you're flying. 
Um, a conventional tail is obviously conventional. We do some things for aerobatic performance and stall recovery, like making sure there's rudder underneath the elevator. Uh, very important for stall recovery. The V tail that we have is actually a Y tail because you'll notice the little short section of rudder underneath and that gives us extra yaw authority and uh, greatly enhances the uh, uh, flying qualities of what you come to expect from a V-tailed airplane. So we spoke off camera earlier about uh, the most popular models that are selling. Are they just, what are the hot, the hot items and what are those? Yeah, so I'd say in terms of our current sales, uh, the YX is certainly the most popular, YXB of course. And number two would be the jet, believe it or not, and uh, probably the 1X, our single place aircraft. All right, so while we're talking about engines, uh, in your shop right now here today, you have a brand new installation with a Rotax. Talk to us about what's going on with, with this model, this airplane. So this is actually a, uh, an employee's aircraft project and he started building this kit before he started working for us. Uh, we've got the unique opportunity and maybe a little scary of uh, being the 2022 One Week Wonder aircraft at AirVenture. And they, uh, because they have a close relationship with Rotax and they've done it on all their One Week Wonder aircraft in the past, they wanted us to do a YXB with a Rotax 912 IS. So uh, our employee decided that that sounds like a great engine option too, and we already were making the motor mounts. So this is actually the first factory installation of a 912 that we've ever done at Sonic. So although we've been providing the motor mounts for, for years now, and several customers have done it, uh, we now will have the full installation. Uh, through Chris's build and so that not only paves the way for how we're going to build the One Week Wonder uh, a year from now uh, but also will give us much better customer support in terms of advising uh, radiators and installation, what holes to put in your cowling and where. So we're really excited about it. So what's in this next room? What's behind door number three? <laughs> yeah, so this is the shop proper before it outgrew itself and went into the uh, flight center which is to my left. And uh, this is what we call the Hornet's Nest R&D facility. And it's where we build new designs as well as uh, obviously build a lot of things for customers uh, like the subsonics that you see behind me. It's um, almost ready for delivery. So how long has the jet program, if you will, been around? And um, obviously you have some, some new development with the two-seater two coming out, but how long has it been in, in, in production now? Yeah, so the subsonics, we really started with the very first proof of concept aircraft flying in 2011. And then obviously had a lot of work to get to what we call JSX-2, which is the, uh, the version that we actually sell to customers with a lot of very enhanced features. That started uh, selling in 2014. Right, so this is sold only as a quick build kit. So it will come to you with the fuselage completely built, the wings completely built and rigged to the fuselage. Uh, as well as the canopy uh, installed. So the builder, when they receive it, uh, they're going to finish off the metalwork portion of things with the tail kit, uh, building all of the control surfaces, including on the wing, the, the flaps and ailerons, and then doing things like gear doors and, uh, and those types of uh, assemblies as far as metalwork goes. But really, uh, that takes very little time, and the bulk of the project for the customer is systems installation. So they'll be installing uh, the landing gear system, uh, the fuel system, uh, the engine installation that takes about 10 minutes, and uh, of course their avionics and uh, upholstery and that type of finishing tasks. Uh, so the engine mount structure, I've got one right here as far as the internals. It's just basically a box structure uh, made to uh, use the turtle deck skin as part of the, uh, the structural portion of things. Uh, the engine only weighs 45 pounds. Okay. And although it exerts 258 pounds of force, that's actually very little um, when you really think about it. Um, so it's two bolts and um, a very simple installation. So essentially you have a, a purpose-built bulkhead, if you will, that is obviously triangulated. And then the skin, of course, completes the, the box right. on the outside of this yeah. to give it full rigidity. Yeah. And of course it's it's all mounted to the to the top longerons of the tail column. So this will start like a typical jet engine? This then? is a real jet engine. A real jet engine. So it's got completely integrated systems in terms of starter, generator, integrated uh, recirculating oil system with a tiny little oil sump. 
and, uh, and you just basically push the button and fold your hands and watch the instruments and it takes care of startup. Right now we're in the, uh, in the Sonics engineering office and what you see on the screen behind me is uh, JSX2T, uh, which is the two-place version of, this, of the Subsonics personal jet. And uh, here at uh, Oshkosh 2021, we are very close to beginning per, uh, construction of the first prototype. And uh, we hope to have it, we will have it at Oshkosh next year in 2022. So we're in the warehouse facility at Sonics Aircraft. This is actually the newest part of the warehouse facility. We had to put an addition on the building. And uh, we basically store parts in here. We actually make very little at Sonics. Uh, we use mostly outside vendors, mostly here in the local area to save on transportation costs and uh, kind of help with our general overhead and help offer actually lower prices for the customer. There are a few things that we make here and we'll go through that as we tour the warehouse. So, what, so what's this newest toy in the building here? Yeah, so this is a brand new CNC router, the first that we've, uh, that we've purchased and we'll be using for Sonics. And you know, right now we use a lot of laser cutting technology, especially for, for uh, the aircraft skins. Uh, this CNC router will uh, allow us to uh, start doing that in-house. That's kind of where, as we get busier, the, uh, the economy of scale sort of kicks in and we can make more stuff here so we can buy material as raw stock and turn it into parts. Uh, but also, uh, it allows us to do uh, things with prototyping a lot more efficiently. Can I assume you have airplanes in these boxes here? Yeah, these are kits uh, ready to head out the door. Uh, a few different types of kits here. The one kind of the second one from the front behind me is representative of what we a full kit would look like. And uh, we've, we've uh, got kind of a unique crating uh, uh, method, if you will. We just have a big pallet, four foot by 10 foot, and all of your flat skins are actually inside the pallet, inside between the layers of wood that you see there. And then we strap the, the bulkier stuff on top. Uh, there is one small separate crate that has your pre-built wing spars. But the point is that you can take delivery of this at your house. The semi-trailer can roll up. You don't need a forklift. You don't need a lift gate. You just cut the banding and hand unload each piece one at a time. All right, so the Sonics is unique in that we don't generally use wing tanks. Uh, the fuel is in the fuselage, just like it is in a lot of vintage aircraft, like Piper Cubs um, or uh, Aronka Chiefs. Um, and so that's something that typically isn't associated with safety. And in those cases with those older airplanes, that's true because of the, me the welded metal tanks that, with seams that can rupture. We use all uh, rotationally molded fuel cells with cross-link polyethylene. So this is much like the fuel cell in a race car. Uh, it's rotationally molded in a gimbal inside the autoclave, so it actually has no seams and it makes it a very uh, crash-worthy, uh, robust fuel system. Yeah, so uh, starting with the bread and butter, that would be the Sonics, and of course it's uh, better looking twin, the YX. Uh, those kits, for, for the complete kit, to get everything for the airframe all in one box, uh, are about 24.5. Um, and then uh, you go to uh, the One X, which is our single place folding wing, air wing aircraft. Uh, that kit is uh, just about 17.5. Um, which is definitely our low-cost leader. Um, and that airplane you can get flying for about $30,000. The Sonics and YX you can get flying for about $40,000 and go up from there. Uh, the Xenos Motor Glider, the kit is uh, about uh, $27,500. And uh, again, about forty, dollars maybe pushing $50,000 to complete that kit. Subsonics, of course, is a bit more expensive, um, mostly due to the engine. But it is sold quick build kit only, and the base price for that kit is $44,000. The engine is $65,000. Uh, usually, you can get one of those airplanes flying for just about $115,000. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Remember to rivet down that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit all the bell notifications so you don't miss a single episode. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.